everybody. It's me, Jennifer Stenhouse from Little Metal Foxes, again. Uh, it is Tooltip Tuesday, and um, I just wanted to say hi. We had some technical issues. We did Tool Talk at 6 as uh, regularly scheduled, um, but for some reason it did not post. So, um, I just wanted to touch base again, make sure the information was recorded so you guys could uh, hear what we had to say. Um, anyway, if you, uh, hey there, hello again. So, um, anyway, I am going to give you the information again so that you guys have it and it's uh, available to you. So, a couple of things. Got some classes coming up we're very excited about. Hey, Karen. Um, and uh, we've got uh, uh, lots of good stuff. We've got a couple of seats left in the Adding Gold workshop coming up this weekend. We have Leslie Perino's amazing um, enameling using uh, embossing folders uh, coming up on the 24th and 25th of September. We've got um, uh, Know Your Torch, your home studio, all those good things coming up, so check it out. You also get 10% off using the code back to school 10 on your purchase through the end of September. So that includes any of the classes that are up um, and up through the end of September, you guys have that time to use that, uh, that code. It expires at the end of September. Anyway, um, it doesn't matter if you're buying one class or a whole bunch of them, it's 10% off the whole thing. Okay. So there's that. Check out Leslie's class. Leslie Perino is amazing. She is uh, a dynamic, wonderful individual. Her work is, she has an amazing sense of color. She is a hilarious instructor. I absolutely adore her. So if you guys are interested in learning more about color and getting that onto your metal and using texture on your metal, this is a great class. It is on September 24th and 25th. Um, and you can use the back to school discount on that as well. The, um, and get 10% off, so you can do that. Also, um, it is all ranges, all skill levels. So if you have access to a kiln, great. If you don't, there are other ways that you can fire the enamels in your, in a small studio using like an ultralight or torch firing, so you can do that. Um, but the embossing folders are really kind of cool to be able to Add, uh, add texture and emboss your metal uh, on a very um, uh, easy sort of way to do it. But check out Leslie Perino on Instagram. She's amazing. And check out her work. She's got some beautiful things. Um, also, too, we are going to give away our um, the book, our extra copy of the Metalsmith Society's guide to jewelry making so we're giving that away as well with some swag uh, stickers and all kinds of good stuff we've got we're gonna include the bookmark from Tanya Davidson so check out Tanya Davidson's Instagram follow her she's great um, and if you don't know about the Metalsmith Society go follow them they are amazing uh, Corky Bolton has all kinds of great tips she's great at the educational part of what she does so please do check out the Metalsmith Society and support them um, and see what all they do. So um, those two things, that's coming up. But what I want to talk to you about is the um, using spray bottles in the studio. Now if you saw us earlier, you probably saw this information. I was hoping Julia was going to join me again, but evidently somehow it disappeared into the ether and so we didn't have anything to post and I wanted to share the information with you so that you could go back and see this later. Um, there are a couple of spray bottles that you can use in the studio for things like um, your spray flux, your liquid flux, or using something like clear fire, uh, your enamel adhesive. So what kinds of spray bottles work and what they don't. Um, with a lot of spray fluxes, the little nozzles have a tendency to clog and I've got a couple of tips for that. So. This one is, um, one of the questions earlier was, what's my favorite liquid flux? And I've got two. One is the Stop Box 2, and this is great for the gold fill and gold. I love this one a lot. Um, I also, I, I love old school. I love the boric acid and alcohol, denatured alcohol mix, but um, it is 
flammable, and this one is water-based, and this one dissolves in warm water, which is nice. So this is a great option. The other option that I love is a Prips Flux, and I like making a little Prips Flux um, myself, but you can buy it ready-made, which is a great option. Um, all of the liquid fluxes that I use, I use on warm metal, and I'll either pre-warm the metal on my solder bench as I'm before I like as I'm in the process of warming metal up, I will heat it up just a little bit enough so that when the liquid flux hits it, when I spray it on, it immediately um, sticks because the water immediately um, uh, dissipates and dehydrates on the surface. So it gives you a much cleaner, more even surface with your fluxes. If you have been using paste flux and you get fire stain in your metal, um, and you can see it sort of like rainbow bruises in the metal, um, this process will actually eliminate that if you protect the surface uh, while you're soldering. So I really like spray fluxes for that reason um, on sterling, especially on gold filled and gold if you're having that problem. Um, with gold, I'm usually using the boric acid and alcohol flux, um, and I'm not usually using a sprayer on dipping. But, um, but just using a simple sprayer works great, right? And um, the other thing I'll tell you is that when I'm using, and I like this one because it's a very fine mist, and this is the Stopbox 2 from Rio, uh, number 504071, and this is the 8 ounce spray bottle, and you can get refills for this as well. But when I use this, I will, like I said, warm up my metal first and then spray it a couple of times until I get a nice, even white, fluffy layer of protectant on my metal. And that will protect it as I heat it up evenly. So if you've ever, like, you put your flux on and suddenly all that flux will pool together because of the surface tension of the water will want to pull itself together on a cold surface. Um, it doesn't have time to dehydrate and spread out properly. So spray flux will help that from happening. That'll also cut down on your finishing time. So if you're spending a lot of time finishing and trying to get rid of all that fire stain, this is going to save you a ton of time by keeping your metal clean. Um, again, I like this one because it is water soluble and it is uh, water based. So you don't have to worry about it like being flammable while you're trying to heat up your surface. Uh, same is true with the Prips Flux. Um, if you go back and watch the uh, my Flux investigation from about a year ago on YouTube or here on Instagram, you'll see uh, the recipes in my compare and contrast and safety with Fluxes. So more information about that. Um, the other thing I'll tell you is that you can get different kinds of spray bottles. Um, this spray bottle is available from Peppy Tools, and this one's kind of nice because as you use it, it creates pressure inside a little plastic, and that way you get a nice even spray, and it's got a big spray handle. So this one is really convenient for, you know, sort of pressurizing and spraying, so this one's kind of nice. Um, and I haven't had a chance to see how long that'll work and if it clogs or not, this one I find, when I'm done with my flux, I can actually just rinse off the tip of this and it keeps it from clogging. The um, other option for spray bottles in the studio is, of course, you know, things like um, uh, simple little spray bottles you can pick up in home and garden centers. This one, this little spray bottle, is usually used for things like applying uh, your clear fire when you're using enamels or your enamel adhesives. And it's also used for all kinds of other print paint applications, but it's a pressurized uh, air, basically, or propellant. And you can put your media in there. So if you're using something like um, uh, a spray flux, put it in there. And it's like just a baby food jar, and you can kind of put in your amount. But this is just a nice little, you know, pressurized spray bottle. So, and this lasts a pretty long time. And then you just get a new little charger when you need to. Uh, you don't have to replace the bottle, but, um, oh, sorry. Hi, can you guys not hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, so the, um, there you go. Hello. So if you are looking for something that it has a propellant in it, this is kind of a good one too. Now, I really like to go a little old school on this and I have a mouth pipe. Now you can get these from, um, uh, different vendors pre-made. I actually had to make mine 
from scratch when I was in school and it was actually a, uh, a soldering uh, a soldering challenge and or soldering project and then it actually is a mouth atomizer. Now mouth atomizers, like I said, you can buy from, you know, you probably can get it on Amazon. You can, um, you can get them for um, all kinds of purposes and I'm sure you could probably get it from pottery supply and painting supply places. But this one I made myself, it's made with um, two pieces of four millimeter tubing. Um, this is a brass tubing right there. And the vertical pipe has a three millimeter tube soldered on the inside. And then I've just got it at a right angle. You'll also notice that the mouth of the horizontal pipe goes across the mouth of the one on the bottom. So you get air coming across this way and it blows across the smaller tube here and it creates a venturi effect that um, a negative pressure across this tube that allows you to blow your flux and this won't clog because it's really big. So what I use is a little film canister like this one. And um, for those of you that don't know what film canisters are, um, when cameras weren't digital, they used to have to have rolls of film. <laughs> and so back in the 70s and 80s, we would use these to put our stash in. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, but I will uh, just use any little, you can use any little container for this. I poked a hole in this. I like these because they're watertight and you can get little watertight containers like this. And I just poked a hole in the top so it's watertight all the way around. And all you have to do with this one now is blow in the mouthpiece. And I flared my mouthpiece out just a little bit on the end. And that way I can sort of hold it in my teeth. This little jar is small enough that it doesn't weigh very much. So as I'm, it gives me hand-free operation. So this isn't gonna slip out while I'm working like that. And just by blowing, it actually sucks up the flux and blows it onto your metal. So you can get really good directional spray with this. Um, and mine's, mine's just pre-made, but like I said, you can, er, mine's handmade by me uh, way back in the day. This one's vintage. Um, but you can always uh, purchase these pre-made. So um, you may have to do a little adjustment on them to get it to the right angle and the right uh, attachment, but usually it's just right up against the mouth of this and good to go. And I have a little flame decoration on this. So if you've got, you know, some students, some high school students that you're like, you know, we're going to do a soldering project, we're going to make this contraption, and then you're going to use it for your spray flux. So making your own tools, I challenge you to do it and share it with us later. But um, mine is, let's see, this piece across the top is 1.75 inches. The down piece, the down tube is about three and a half inches. And you just want it long enough to kind of reach the bottom of your bottle. And you can either, you know, put a little slant on it or uh, a couple of little saw lines in it so it doesn't like suck onto the bottom of your uh, container. And then I've just got a three millimeter tube on the inside that's just about uh, half an inch long that goes down on the inside of that. And then just soldered at a right angle. And again, so that the top of the narrow tube is about halfway up the mouth of the wide tube. So it creates negative pressure and blows straight across. So there you go. And then I just flared that end. So I have a little bit of a mouth uh, bitey part so I can keep it in my teeth a little bit better. Um, but this is a great uh, flux sprayer. So if you're looking for something like that, it's awesome. And um, yeah, so that's my tip on spray bottles. Um, okay, so. Uh, giveaway again I will do this and say uh, shout out to Corky Bolton on her new book Metalsmith Society Guide to Jewelry Making it's a beautiful book we love it uh, Julia and I love it a lot and one of the things oh look liquid flux right there um, one of the things I love about it is that um, it's it's great she's got good information it's good solid information very practical for beginners and good references beyond that. But one of my favorite things about it is that Corky um, is really good about adding tips from the community and giving a shout out to those people, giving them credit for sharing those uh, 
those bits of information and I just think that's a brilliant part of this book. I really love that. So tip from our community and then who is who's that shout out from. So, um, so check it out if you haven't already. Uh, follow Metal Smith Society. Um, the other thing I've got in here is, I love this, follow Tanya Davidson. We love her too. This is a great little bookmark that she sells and it's got lots of little reference information on it. And I think it's like a five pack for a couple of bucks. So I'm gonna put one of those in the book. And we've also got some of our new swag uh, stickers that we're gonna put in here and more. So also we've got new stickers. So check those out on our website. So we're gonna send this out and the um, winner of the book this evening is Elena May Jewelry. So go follow her. She's down in Sheridan, Wyoming. So shout out to Elena. Congratulations on the book. And uh, just to direct message you, give us a, a shout and we'll get this sent out to you real soon. Um, again, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great night. If you have any questions, let us know go watch our other tool tips. You can watch them here on Instagram or you can see all 81 of them now on YouTube. And uh, hope you have a great night. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for the tool tips, DM us, let us know. And uh, yeah, also uh, again, if you want 10% off on classes, uh, the discount expires the end of September. It's back to school 10 and you guys can use that for all the classes um, in one purchase, or you know, if you just wanna check one out, go do that. So, got lots of alternative stone setting classes coming up, there's some right there, and adding gold vessels this weekend, two prong settings, uh, pearls and post settings, um, we've got Know Your Torch, Setting Up Your Home Studio, and a whole bunch of core skills classes that we just added. So, hope you guys will check those out. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 o'clock when we're usually on. And uh, have a great night. Bye, everybody.